number. Okay, so let's write this in, uh, in the denominator part. So we have lambda, we have summation xi minus x bar whole square. Now we create the same quantity that's, uh, that's also in the um, numerator part, right? Uh, so we have summation xi minus x bar whole square plus we have n times x bar minus mu zero whole square divide not divide right yet sorry <laughs> we will divide it later um, okay get this um, okay uh, to the n over two. Okay, so we have the same quantities. Let's try to get rid of the same quantities that we have in the numerator and also the denominator. Write them as 1 over 1 plus. So we have n x bar minus mu zero square. Now put a ratio here. Put this x n minus x bar whole square. Okay, and over 2. Okay, so now we created one statistic which is which has a uh, non-statistical distribution. Can you guess uh, what could be that? Uh, so it's in terms of squares, actually. Um, but when you consider uh, the numerator, uh, see we have x bar and under the null hypothesis mu is mu zero. So we have x bar minus mu zero divided by s. Okay, um, and you know the distribution of that, I hope you remember, it is t, right? So if we um, define it as 1 over 1 plus t0 squared, um, let's see, do we have to add some, yeah, we have to divide it by n minus 1, um, this whole thing, n over 2, where r t0 Square is, um, or let me define t0 square 1 over n minus 1 term equals n x bar minus mu 0 whole square divided by summation x i minus x bar whole square. Okay, and if you remember how we derived the t distribution, x bar minus mu. Uh, sigma uh, over square root of n distributed as standard normal, if you remember. And when we consider the distribution of summation xi minus x bar whole square divided by sigma square as, um, as chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, when we get the ratio of these, which is x bar minus mu sigma over square root of n, divided by summation xi minus x bar whole square divided by sigma square in the square root over the degrees of freedom which is n minus 1 here okay so what we have the sigma terms are cancels out and um, okay so what we have here is let me see. Um, uh, this n minus one term uh, goes to the um, this side. We have n minus one x bar minus mu, and we have in square root summation x i minus x bar whole square divided by n term. Um, and term should be in multiplication, right? Sorry. And we have an oops, oops, an. Okay. Uh, if you write it in terms of s uh, square or in terms of um, MAD, then we will get of these n minus one or n terms. Um, so uh, let's say this is t or yeah, let's say this is t, then t distributed as t with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Usually we don't keep this denominator as summation x i minus x bar whole square, we write the sample variance, remember? Okay, so then this means that um, our lambda 0 is a function of this t statistic, student t statistic. Okay, so our lambda equals 2, we can write it again, 1 
uh, plus t0 squared over n minus 1 to the n over 2. And our rejection mechanism is what? Reject a0 if lambda is less than lambda 0. So in terms of theta 0 squared, so this is our statistic that we have to derive our test. In terms of t0 squared, what should be uh, the testing procedure? So we have to look at our lambda is a decreasing or increasing function of theta 0 squared. So as you can see, when theta 0 increases, lambda decreases. So basically, theta 0 squared is a decreasing function, or lambda is a decreasing function of t0 square. Okay? Uh, actually, at this point, you can do the calculation, take the ln and try to keep t0 square alone. But uh, if you uh, try to use this kind of logic, then you don't have to deal with lots of math. Um, so this means that our uh, if our testing procedure is reject a0, if lambda less than lambda 0 uh, is identical, with the, the case that t0 squared greater than some constant c squared, let's say. Okay, so as you can say c, but since it's squared, then uh, you may prefer to use uh, the squared constant term. It's not a big deal, actually. Um, so, in terms of uh, t0, then reject a0 if our t sub 0 is less than c. Uh, minus d or t0 greater than plus c. Okay, then, um, as usual, what is c? So if you find c, then if you find c, then we can drive the whole test. So what is the point that we have to look at is again the definition of alpha. So alpha equals probability that reject a0. Uh, under mu equals mu zero case, so uh, our testing procedure reject a zero t zero less than minus t even mu equal mu zero plus probability that t zero greater than c under mu equal mu zero. Okay, so we already know that t is distributed as t distribution, where our two two mu is mu zero. Okay, so we have t with n minus one degrees of freedom. And do the same here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, greater than c. Then in terms of t table, again, when we consider these quantities, let's say this is the shape of the t with n minus one degrees of freedom. So we have to reject our null hypothesis when our t is less than minus c, and do the same thing for the upper boundary. And we have equal tails. Again, we are using the symmetricity property, so each probability uh, has alpha over two probability. Mm. And um, then, uh, so this minus c should be minus t n minus one alpha over two, and this should be t n minus one alpha over two. So our DLRT of size alpha is to reject a0 if our t0. What is t0? We can define our t0 as x bar minus t0 divided by, um, divide by s over n minus 1, which is less than t n minus 1 of over 2 minus, sorry, or where our t0, the same quantity, n minus 1 greater than t, um, sorry, n minus 1 of over 2. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, so you can also derive the test in terms of t0 squared. Um, uh, in terms of t0 squared, uh, which gives us a 
TFS, you know, uh, if T0 squared greater than T squared, and then our T0 squared is actually F distributed, you know, F equals T uh, squared, which is X bar minus mu whole squared divided by S squared over N minus 1. So this has F distribution with these degrees of freedoms when n is greater than 1, then our f0 equal t0 squared, right? And it has distribution of this under the null hypothesis. Then again, using the um, alpha, probability that t0 squared greater than c squared, where mu equal mu 0 case. Uh, so we define our f test uh, n minus 1 c squared, then this test can be uh, defined by f1 and n minus 1 and alpha. Then actually these are equivalent uh, like the ratio test of f if our F0 value is greater than this. Okay. Um, I will... Um, uh, okay. I will also solve the powers. Um, power and also a uh, different question, which is one-sided uh, test uh, in another video. Uh, so I have to stop.